very blessed afternoon to you. Uh, we were really planning to live stream this, but since it's April Fool's Day, our technology decided to play an April Fool's trick on us today. So we are pre-recording this as, instead. So we welcome you today and we pray your, that God will bless you and may this be a special blessing to you as we continue with this Wednesday service as we are having the last service before Palm Sunday and the beginning of Holy Week. And do remember on Palm Sunday, we will continue to do communion drive through from 10 to 12. So keep that in mind as well. And we will have palm crosses maybe also for you that day as well as you come through. Uh, God's blessings. Let's continue now with our opening hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God and Father, during Lent, we keep our spiritual eyes fixed on Jesus and the cross of Calvary. We remember how Jesus Christ came into this world to suffer and die as our divine substitute in order to bring forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Because of his great suffering, the Holy Spirit works within our lives to keep us strong in faith when we are enduring our own sufferings. Left to ourselves, we grumble and complain under the weight of suffering, and we become weary in our earthly pilgrimage. We are drawn once again to focus on the cross of our Lord Jesus. It reminds us of the most perfect sacrifice offered on it for our sins. And in it, we see Jesus' suffering that we find strength to endure our own, no matter whether that suffering takes the form of fear over the coronavirus or physical and emotional afflictions impacting our life. The cross also reminds us, as it reminded the Apostle Paul, 
that the Holy Spirit gives us grace sufficient for us in our suffering and reminds us that God's strength is made perfect in weakness. Bless us now in this time of worship and throughout the remainder of Lent that we might grow in grace through the study of your word, yield all of our concerns at the foot of the cross, and receive the refreshing peace that you offer through Christ Jesus. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now continue with our next hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Our psalm reading chosen for today is Psalm 130. Again, one of the psalms of ascent, wherein the children of Israel would sing one of these psalms as they went up to the feast, to the temple in Jerusalem. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever, world without end. Amen. We continue with our next hymn, Old Rugged Cross. attraction for me 
gospel reading for today comes from Mark chapter 10, verses 35 through 45. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do something for us, whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them, but it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I bet some of you have taken up a new hobby lately. I know I have. The hobbies I've taken up lately, well, one of them is cartography of all things. Well, cartography, I'm sure you know, that's the study of maps. It's a lot of fun. There's a good chance that as you've been watching the news or maybe reading an article in the newspaper or online, you've been presented with a map to show you something, something that's happening around the world. And I've come in contact with a lot of maps lately, and one of them that I've looked at this year is one that I look at about this time of year. I've spent a good number of winters waiting for spring, and once spring hit, I'd spend a couple minutes looking at the latest pollen map. Now, admittedly, it's not the most interesting map that I could look at. My weather app only gives me four colors to work with, red, orange, yellow, and green. So I I used to live in Michigan, which was a orange area. St. Louis was a red area, actually. And now, living in Oklahoma, I get a little mix of the two, believe it or not. Now, pollen, it might not affect you like it affects others, I'm sure. But I think you might know somebody whose seasonal allergies are hitting their peak right about now. This is a terrible time to be suffering from allergies, especially when every sneeze and cough is being analyzed. The millions of seasonal allergy sufferers are fighting a battle on two fronts, and pollen is definitely one of them. Now, you might ask, why in the world am I talking about pollen? Uh, We just heard the gospel reading. It wasn't in there, Vicar. I know. It wasn't in our gospel reading, that's for sure. In our gospel reading, Jesus here is talking with and he's teaching his disciples. Here we're being reminded of things that we've heard before. Things like Jesus is going to die. And Jesus, he's predicted his death three times so far in the gospel of Mark. And now we're in chapter 10 and we hear something extremely significant that we might even overlook because we know the full story. But in verse 45 of our text, we hear for the first time why Jesus is going to die. That's significant. We also learn who Jesus is going to die for. That's where the pollen comes in, believe it or not. Well, maybe not the word pollen, but the word pallone. That's a Greek word. Pallone is the last word of our gospel reading for today. So while pollen might only affect a certain number of people with allergies, the Greek word 
alone affects everyone. Now, I don't have the exact numbers on alone, but I can tell you the definition of it means many. It's an undescribable amount. It's an indeterminable amount. It's just many. It's a lot. So the definition of alone means many. Many, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. To give his life as a ransom for alone, for many, for you and for me, we're all included in the many, in the alone. And when Paul writes to Timothy, he says something pretty similar. He says, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, and that man is Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. That is the gospel of Jesus, who came to die for many, for Pallone, and also for the word Pontone, another Greek word. Pontone means all. So we have Pallone and Pontone. We have many and we have all who Jesus is being ransomed and died and rose for. That's the message we are charged to tell, to make disciples, to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. We go into the world and we tell the story of God who sent his Son to be ransomed for us, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. Now, Pallone, it also led me to figure out, you know, think about for a second, how is this connecting to the Red Letter Challenge? Well, how is your Red Letter Challenge week of going been motivating you lately? I love where the first chapter of the going week started. It started at home. and I'm sure a lot of you guys are there right now. Maybe your going hasn't left your domicile, but that's okay. It's okay to spend the next 14 to 30 days working on the going that begins at home, the going that begins with our families. That's the most important going we can be doing. Before we go out and proclaim to the world who God is, let's first remember that we're living out our faith in our home. The going in the home, it looks like parents learning scripture and teaching it to their children. It looks like the families of the confirmation students reviewing worksheets and reviewing memory work and watching the videos for the week and talking about them as a family. And nowadays, it, this going, it looks like families sitting down on a Sunday morning in the living room watching a televised worship service. And maybe even somebody who has their finger on the remote to turn up the volume if somebody's singing just a little bit too loud. It also looks like the family talking about the word of God, the gospel that was preached on, and even talking about the Red Letter Challenge Bible study that you can also watch. We have all these ways to be going right inside of our homes, right with our families. We're all learning and adapting to make the praising and the worshiping and going that begins in the home the best that it can be. Now, the second week of, or second day of this going week in the Red Letter Challenge introduced the idea of going out of your comfort zone, but going out of your comfort zone equipped with the great comforter, the Holy Spirit, to talk to those just outside of your family unit, people like your neighbor your neighbor who's included in the Pallone, the many, whom Jesus was ransomed for. And I'm sure those neighbors might even be affected by the same pollen that you're affected by. If now isn't exactly the best time to be meeting with your neighbors, maybe it's something you can look forward to in the days to come. We're called to witness to our neighbor, which leads to Yesterday's challenge, which was writing down your testimony. Writing down your testimony was answering just two questions, two specific questions that we can answer right here and right now. 
The first question was, what has God done for you? Now, every testimony is specific to each person, but there are some universal truths. What has God done for you? Well, God sent you his son, Jesus. Now, the second question, what difference has God made in your life? Again, this can be a whole host of things, but I would say that after reading Mark chapter 10, verse 45, I would say the difference that God has made for me in my life is that his son Jesus, whom he sent, was ransomed for me, and because of that, I am included in the many whom Jesus was ransomed for. And you're included too. We're included in the many whom Jesus was ransomed for. We all have the hope and promise of eternal life with God in heaven because we have been given the gift of faith. And while our going has changed recently, we can rely on remembering that Jesus already did go. Jesus went to the cross to die. He did all of the going so that he could ransom us and take our sins upon himself and forgive us. And we have been given the gift of being included in the many and the all, the polone and the pontone, whom Jesus died and rose for. Praise be to God. Amen. Let us come before God's throne of grace with our prayers. Our gracious and almighty Father, with humble hearts we implore your mercy and seek your peace and reassurance. In the midst of these troubled times and with fears of COVID-19 and the many multiplying cases, it is easy for us to lose sight of your gracious and almighty hand, Father. In this hour, in these days, direct us heavenward so that we can fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of our God. Fix our vision on his gracious working, that we may not grow weary and lose heart, and let your Holy Spirit revive us through your word, and let him lead us to rely on your everlasting arms as our refuge and strength. This we ask in the name of our Redeemer and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord visit your homes and drive far from them all snares of the enemy, the evil one. May his holy angels dwell within your homes to preserve you in peace. May the almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you with his peace and keep you all in his peace now and forever. Amen. Let's continue with our closing hymn, Abide With Me. <laughs>